For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. I'm sorry, that was from Romans 1.20. Romans 10.9 For if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, confess our mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. John 5.24-25 Most assuredly I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has ever left everlasting life and shall not come into judgment but has passed from death to life death into life most assuredly I say to you the hour is coming and is now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live Acts 4 8 8-12 Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, If we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all, and to all the people of Israel, that the, by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by whom this man stands here before you whole. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. You think about that for a minute. That's powerful stuff. Not only is it powerful in itself, but when you think that that um, Peter was telling that to the people that were ready, willing, and desired to to kill those guys for saying what they just said, and they didn't care. What happened? They dispersed after Jesus was crucified. What happened? All of a sudden they came back together and they're ready to spout off like this and, and get ready to be killed for it and more than willing to be killed for it? What happened? The answer is they knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jesus was resurrected. He was alive and everything he told them was true. And they were going to go to their grave, their brutal death, proclaiming the word of God no matter who didn't like it. So he's saying this. Look at that. He says that to the rulers of the people and elders of Israel. They had the power to have them killed at any moment. And they, were, they just gave it to him straight. Isn't that awesome? John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So remember in the first video of this little two-part thing where I said um, there's those of you that are going to you know call the Christians narrow-minded and bigoted and well here here's where the proof is in the pudding right here because this is from God's Word Jesus himself from his his very his own mouth said I am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the Father except through me he didn't say he was a way or an option. He said he is it. He is the only way. Romans 1.16 For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. Romans 6.23 Now this is the one... Remember, I think it was lesson one where we, we read, for the wages of sin is death. And we said we'd get back to it. Well, we're getting back to it. Because we've looked at in the last nine, nine lessons that the wages of sin, the wage is something you earn and deserve. And it says the wages of sin is death. The rest of that verse is, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
1 Corinthians 1, 30 to 31. But of him who are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that as it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Some versions say, he, he who boasts, let him boast in the Lord. Okay, Philippians 3, 7 and 9. But what things are to gain to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered and suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through the faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. Colossians 1, 19, I'm sorry, 1, 9 to 14. For this reason, we also, since the day we heard, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you may walk worthy of the Lord. Walk worthy of the Lord. Getting drunk and going to strip joints and being profane and blasphemous and spent wasting all your time watching sports and watching sitcoms and reading gossip magazines. I mean, just let, look at the list goes on, what the world will consume you with. That's not walking worthy of the Lord. I'm just being honest with you. It's just not. Walk worthy of the Lord, fully, fully pleasing Him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to His glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood. And, okay, through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. Redemption, the price that needs to be paid to redeem you from, the, from sin and death. That you rightly deserve because you have earned it. It's a wage you have earned and deserve is sin from sin is death, eternal condemnation. That redemption, that payment only comes one way, and that is through the blood of Jesus Christ. That's it, that's all. Matthew three sixteen and were baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. Confess your sins to the Lord. He is faithful and and, and just forgive your sins, but confess them and be sorry enough in them that you turn from them and don't do them again, right? That's that's repentance. That's for confessing and forsaking your sin. That's repentance. Mark sixteen fifteen to sixteen, and he said, "Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature." That's what you're hearing is the gospel here. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who, he who does not believe will be condemned. Acts 2.38 And Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. That's it. That's all. It's decision time. You heard the question. You heard the most important question ever uttered. And it's being asked of you right now. Who do you say Jesus is? God bless you all. We'll see you.